Why does acid reflux appear alongside uh, weak LES and hiatal hernia? Because the same basic disease mechanism is creating all of those problems. All right, hey there, everybody. In this short video, I want to talk about what about a weak LES? LES means lower esophageal sphincter. What about a weak LES in the absence of hiatal hernia, HIH? Is it possible to heal it as well? Yes, look, most people, lots of people develop hiatal hernia. And lots of people develop a weak lower esophageal sphincter. Why is that so common? The same thing, the first thing to understand is the same basic mechanism. The pivot protocol is a completely different way of, quite frankly, understanding cause and effect for your condition. So, for example, we're, we care about the disease mechanism inside your body that's giving rise to your reflux. Now, I give you a bunch of different ways that you could be causing reflux or that reflux is caused. And your job is to just go through a little bit of the material. You'll very quickly figure out your reflux type. If you've taken the quiz, right, you're on your way to understanding that. And obviously, there's more. I give you more details. With regard to a weak lower esophageal sphincter and hiatal hernia, the basic mechanism that gives rise to those things is also the same mechanism that gives commonly gives rise to acid reflux. Why does acid reflux appear alongside uh, weak LES and hiatal hernia? Because the same basic disease mechanism is creating all of those problems. For example, here's a disease mechanism that would cause all three of those things. You eat food and your pivot organs aren't working properly, so you develop what's called food stagnation. Food and waste are stagnating inside your guts, in your intestines, okay? That stagnant food and waste produces bloating, it produces gas, it gives you abdominal pain and cramping. And sometimes maybe you get explosive diarrhea or loose stools or, or maybe you have no, uh, you don't have regular elimination at all. And so you don't go to the toilet every day, right? Which is terrible. Anytime your elimination is disrupted, you're headed for trouble. But the basic mechanism, the disease mechanism of food stagnation, the disease cause that we call food stagnation puts upward pressure it's not only a blockage inside you, so when you swallow acid and bile and food, it's, right, it's a traffic jam, right? Other food that you're eating and other drink and other stomach juices, well, you try, you, you swallow stuff and it doesn't go down because there's something blocking the path. There's something in the way of those things, so you develop acid reflux. But that food and waste trapped inside you also pushes upward. Basic image of a hiatal hernia, your stomach is pushing upward through the diaphragm muscle. And that muscle has an opening where the esophagus connects to the st stomach. And when you have food stagnation, you have upward pressure pushing your stomach through the diaphragm muscle. Not only do you have hiatal hernia, you put enough pressure on the, the lower muscle in the esophagus, the lower esophageal, esophageal sphincter muscle, fatigues it, it wears out. It can't close the way it's supposed to. You understand? All three of those things are caused by one mechanism, food stagnation, which is the real root cause of acid reflux. I mean, I tell you about all the other junctive problems that go along with food stagnation. Talk about imbalance in the liver, problems with the spleen, the intestines, right? These are the main organs involved, your stomach, obviously. Um, these are the main organs involved in digestion, and so we're going to address each of the symptoms that pertains to each of those organs. But look, the root basic fundamental problem giving rise to acid reflux in you know, almost 100% of the people who have it has to be, almost by definition, food stagnating in your, in your digestive tract. Be in your stomach, that your stomach's not emptying properly. Could be in your small intestine. You could have inflammatory problems in the small intestine overgrowth of bacteria, dampness building up, inflammatory problems, diverticulitis in your intestines. That could also happen in your large intestine, lower down. But somewhere along the line, right, food and waste have to be stagnating, almost by definition, in order to create this upward rebound of, of uh, food and flu uh, of uh, food and digestive juices. So we know that, we know that that's a that's a fundamental key point about understanding acid reflux. And if you do understand that and you know how to beat food stagnation, things like hiatal hernia and a weak LES, overwhelmingly, the overwhelming majority of people who develop hiatal hernia and weak LES do not need surgery to correct it. It will heal on its own. It will go away. There's some small percentage of people where so much damage has been done. And, you know, usually these are also people who, quite frankly, they're not going to stop eating anyway, right? They're not going to change their habits. They're not going to do anything different. Just give me the surgery. 
surgery and let me keep living my life and my, my quite frankly, bad lifestyle the way I bloody well want to. And you know what? Fair enough. I'm a big fan of, it's the libertarian in me that believes very strongly everybody's allowed to go to hell in their own way. Good luck to you. I, I don't have anything to say to people who won't change. That's your choice. But if you want to be well, it's not hard to heal hiatal hernia. It's not hard to heal an LES. I mean, it will heal on its own if you stop putting pressure on it and you stop putting pressure on these areas of your digestive tract by reducing and eliminating food stagnation. If you want to know how to do that and you need to heal from all of that, click the link below, take the quiz, get started on the pivot protocol, and keep sending me your questions. Okay, click below. Thanks. Thanks again.